So many things are similar here. So why can't uh, we pair these two cities up? You are very much welcome to your own abode. The place is for you yes. and it's for us. <laughs> I love Ghana, I love Winnebago. That is the, 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 the custom of our land. When you come, you have to shake you, shake your hand and say Aquaba. And then when I say Aquaba, all that you say is Medassa. We thank the good Lord for that. I was here in May of 2009, and you know, uh, everybody's been very friendly and welcoming, just as they were when we came uh, then. And um, we're looking forward to spending the next nine days and reconnecting with our, our friends over here in Ghana and Winneba. It, it, it will surprise you to know that so many people don't even have a clue what a sister city is in Charlottesville. Meanwhile, they've had three sister cities for a long time in Europe. We often uh, ha labor under the delusion that, uh, you know, all there is in the world is the 10 square miles of the city of Charlottesville. And the reality is that there's a lot to be learned uh, from communities and peoples beyond our city limits, whether it's other cities in our country or in city cities across the world. I love the comparison. I love the sister city concept that we have chosen a city in the developing world. I mean, I know there's so much in common between the two cities. The people are so hospitable. Well, it is comparable in an African to American sort of way in terms of size of community and educational community. It's fascinating to see that they can be similar but so different at the same time. The Sister City program is designed to encourage exchanges between citizens, um, between business leaders, between government officials, between artists, etc., etc., uh, 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 from these various communities. The processes of uh, training our two towns began some years ago. We finally signed a memorandum of understanding with Charlottesville last summer. Yeah, I guess it covers some of the things that we want to do or see. After signing the memorandum of understanding, the relationship is not the ordinary one, but now it's a burning one. So we do everything in common. Your sister communicates with you, talks to you, have a relationship with you. You know, if you, there's something that you don't understand about something, you go to your sister. Given the fact that we're both university communities, uh, we see a lot of opportunity for the University of Virginia in Charlottesville and the University of Education in Winnebuck to collaborate for the mutual benefit of both universities. Uh, so we are looking at our students, you know, getting the chance to go back to Charlottesville to do some credit courses. Uh, we're looking at students from Charlottesville also coming over to Ghana. Uh, I guess the cutting edges, things that have to do with culture. We are trying to sit down with the people of Winneba and discuss how we can work together to build a library, a first class 21st century library for them. We have uh, some library professionals here, some construction professionals, community leaders, um, and uh, we're excited about this project. Coming together, I, I think, is important because we have a lot to exchange. You seem to have, that is Charlotte, you seem to have a very rich uh, reading, educational, 
culture and that is something that we can borrow from and you can also borrow from our rich culture. This is possibly helping them with the library but the ultimate goal is to help them with the quality of life, help them to read better and integrate with the rest of the world. So we came on this trip to see what exists currently and we found out that the library that exists in our opinion is woefully inadequate. We thank you for the donation you've just made. We are going to make sure the purpose in which the donation has been made is going to be uh, maintained or achieved. You know, obviously it was, it was hard to find people that were reading or that there were books or magazines or newspapers available. We never would like to have something like the library that we are looking for. Because education, without education, nothing goes on well. So we would like the children to read more books, understand what is going on in the world, and then they can take care of themselves in the future. Winneba cannot boast of any well-equipped library. We don't have it. Talk of libraries in schools. They are non-existent. The municipality is having about 15,000 public people and uh, on the grounds the private people outnumber that of the public people. Yeah. So we may estimate that about 30 something thousand are in the private institutions. So that if your child falls within the ages of 5 to 13, the child goes to school free. School uniforms, classrooms are there, teachers are there books are there, it might not be sufficient. Then we have about 17 senior high. But that of the public, when we say public, we are referring to government assisted schools. That one we have only one. The government high school, all sorts of students have been coming, if only your grades are good. We have the houses, the female hostel, and the male dormitories. I think it's about 1,000 plus students sort of selective, depend upon your ability and interest. As a child will be asked to move into the visual arts or the pure sciences or the accounting section. That's the business session. Yeah. That's a system of education that we are having. Only a small number of children attend secondary schools because you have to pay, you have to apply for admission. So you have to be admitted. You have to be admitted and you have to pay and not that many students can afford and not that many students are motivated to and then an even smaller number go on to college, tertiary. There are more male moving from the basic high to the secondary as against females. Uh, reason being that, you know, looking at the tradition that we have ourselves in this municipality, um, family members out of poverty will prefer to educate their male child as against that of their female child. And there's a lot of sensitization going on to bridge that gap. Reading helps you to acquire the knowledge. And if you don't have the books, how do you acquire the knowledge? Because if you educate a child, you educate the whole nation. If you invest in your child's education, the child becomes an access to himself first, to the community the family and the nation at large. Yes. So if I cannot invest in it because I am lacking certain facilities or resources, so to speak, I, the child that will come out will not be of a good resource. And at the end of the day, much cannot be derived from that child. And it is the community that will suffer because the child lives in the community. How can a community develop? As many similarities as there are, we have a different way of life in both cities and I think what they've got is working really well for them right now. The GDP in your sister city is very low. When I say the GDP I'm talking about the general uh, the income level of the people. Here we are predominantly fisher folks and this kind of activity it is seasonal. So when it is out of season, you can imagine the level of poverty in the system. Uh, we are at the threshold of having uh, an economic um, um, development. But the sort of economic venture here is seasonal. And when the season is over, they will wallow in their poverty until the next season. I think the first day I was really shocked at um, how poor the people were and the 
that they didn't have very much of anything at all and it seemed very crowded and um, but over the course of the days uh, as I got to know the people more um, I found them to be just delightful and the kids were like kids everywhere and and like to have fun and like to play and were very loving. Many people in this community are very happy and that they have a place they want to stay and improve and I think our communities can offer each other a similar perspective on seeking a higher quality of life.
Thank you.